remarkable thing is not that message senders in a highly competitive environment use emotion or try to, to attract us. They've been doing that since people started telling stories and trying to get other people's attention. The remarkable thing is that we're increasingly drawn to this kind of appeal. Here is the reason. Neuroscientists have learned that certain kinds of cognitive challenges, think of it as intellectual challenges, thinking challenges, produce emotional arousal. By emotional arousal, I don't mean any particular emotion like love or sadness. A brain teaser is not what most anybody thinks of as a love potion. What I'm talking about when I say emotional arousal is a kind of general mental rheostat. At its highest setting, you can think of it, emotional arousal, as stress. Some folks find it a little hard to accept that cognitive challenge produces emotion because we've been taught for millennia that reason and emotion are quite separate with reason being um, uh, the, the, the important part of our minds and emotion a lower order of brain work. Plato would have been appalled to think that the kind of intellectual stim any kind of intellectual stimulation provoked our emotions, but some kinds do it every time. Here's what works. In fact, it works so well that it's one way neuroscience scientists arouse the brains of experimental subjects so that they can study them uh, and study them in an emotional state. Give, person, give, give a person a very difficult cognitive task, like a mind-bending anagram or a seven-digit into 13-digit di uh, long division problem. That itself will cause some arousal. But to turn up the rheostat, make the person do another task at the same time, even a simple one. Have her push a button indicating whether a red light or a green light on the desk is just lighted up, for example. This turns the rheostat up significantly. Then provide a lot of information to the subject, some of it relevant, some of it utterly irrelevant. Up the rheostat goes. Set a time li limit, up it goes again. And then the most powerful of all arousers, repeatedly interrupt her as she tries to do her task. Now she's in the red zone. One fundamental characteristic of an emotionally aroused brain is that it's drawn to emotionally hot stimuli. This makes a lot of sense when you think about it in evolutionary terms. Imagine one of our very distant ancestors on the African savanna the sounds of rustling in the brush have gotten his attention, but there are a lot of other things going on. There are wildebeest leaping, there are garish birds flocking overhead, distant elephants are trumpeting. It would not be helpful for this brain to be drawn to these stimuli as much as to the glimpse of a lion in the brush. And his brain isn't drawn to them rather than the lion. It focuses on the lion which is, by the way, why he's our ancestor. <laughs> the information-immersed environment in which we live is precisely the kind of place that presents us with the very kind of cognitive challenges that promote, pr produce emotional arousal. Multitasking, too much information, constant interruption, uh, time pressure. And that is why even the readers of the New York Times are increasingly drawn to things like watching a middling actor fall to pieces before our very eyes. And the National Geographic Channel viewers still watch another show about poisonous snakes or spiders.